My name's James Cooper and I'm running a marathon every day this year. So far, I've run over 5,000 miles in the Speedgoat 5 and for the last 150 miles, I've been wearing the Speedgoat 6 and today I'll be reviewing the new Hoka Speedgoat 6. Just a disclaimer, I'm no tech expert. I know very little about the shoes, but what I do know is the experience that I've had with both the Speedgoat 5 and the Speedgoat 6, and that's what I'll be sharing with you today. I'd heard recommendations of Hoka, I'd heard really good things, so I thought, well, let's give them a try. And since that day, I just haven't turned back. Uh, I've done a variety of racing. I've done mountain racing across 100 plus miles. Uh, I've done sort of flat running, uh, road running, all things like that. Uh, and I just find Hoka and particularly the Speedgoat, it's just supportive. It has a good response to it and it just gives me everything that I need in a shoe. I uh, don't know if you want to do this, but you could look at my feet. I haven't got one blister. I haven't got anything. They're just the perfect fit for me. It's how it cradles my foot. And also, yeah, it's the stability that it provides me. But it also has, if you want to put your foot down a little bit, it has that response to it. Um, I have certain issues with my feet, um, like inflamed planter from time to time, and it still gives me the cushioning, but it doesn't impede on that. Um, yeah, and the traction, it's, Everything comes together for the perfect experience for me. I tend to go about half a size up, personally. Um, I wear Bondi in a half size smaller. I just find it gives you that little bit more room, um, but still keeping everything you know, compact that you need for, for the ride that you're after. I snapped my tib and fib playing football in 2012. This was way before I started running, uh, but then I was getting certain issues quite a while back uh, with my planter. I think I got a partial tear on a race that I did, pushing too hard on an uphill. Um, so I went to see a physio and he recommended a, 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 a sort of an insole that would just keep my arch up because um, I have what's called an exercise induced flat foot on my left side. So just by having this in the shoe, it's just given me that little bit more um, sort of support and just allows me to, yeah, to throw out the, uh, throw out the miles, whatever the distance. So my first impressions of, uh, out of the box were, I felt like they'd slimmed down a little bit. Um, they just looked, yeah, a little bit more slim round kind of the top of the shoe. Uh, when I first put them on, they felt a little bit more snug as well. Uh, and that's a good thing. I felt like it just almost felt like the foot just stayed in place that little bit more. I think my feet have almost molded into the Speedgoat 5. It's almost like my foot is just an extension of the 5. So yeah, I was a little bit nervous initially. Uh, so what I've done is I've kind of done segments. I haven't gone straight into running a whole marathon in them. I sort of bro broke them in a little bit as they felt a little bit more rigid at first. But ever since then, uh, having done probably 30, 40 miles, now they're kind of the go-to go -to shoe. Uh, they respond brilliantly. Again, they've still got the comfort as before. Um, the support underfoot seems to be even better. I tend to go high 400, so most of my shoe, minimum I'll uh, flip a new pair at about 450. Top end 500, that's kind of, um, that's where I, I sit with it. I would probably say, uh, yeah, low, low 400 to mid 400 would be my sweet spot. Uh, above that, it's, it still runs really well. There's no damage to the shoe. It's just you realize when you put on your next pair that you think, okay, maybe I, I lost a little bit of that, that cushion and support. But I mean, they're, they're good for at least 400 miles. Um, yeah, every single time. The more I'm wearing them, the more I'm sort of growing into them, whether that's the, the feet slightly adapting or whether they've just not done too many changes that have affected sort of the, the, the ride in general. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to think there's no reason why I can't get similar mileage out of these ones for sure. I mean, it's versatile, it fits on both. Like, there's no denying in the mountains, on the trails, uh, sort of more technical trails, it, it's really head and shoulders above anything I've worn before because of the, its ability to sort of keep you up, not let you slip and all things like that. But when it's, yeah, more compact trail, uh, such as where I'm doing my, my sort of daily marathons, it, 
it serves its purpose there as well. It's, it feels a little bit more responsive because it's a little harder underfoot. I'm a bit of a Hoka fanboy, I'm not gonna lie. I, uh, I'm a personal trainer. Uh, I have a lot of people that come to me in the gym and they see that I'm wearing Hoka and they often ask me about them. Uh, I've converted a lot of people to them. Um, but it's, it's, it's been their own feedback that they come to me and they say, you know, how, how fantastic it's helped their running, it's helped their ability to sort of run longer. Uh, so I would say, I mean, give it a try, give it a try. If you're not overly happy with how your trail running's going or if you feel like you just need that little bit more um, stability underfoot, then yeah, there's, there's no harm in, in giving it a try. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's the reason that I think I'm on day 198 of a 366 challenge is the Speedgoat. Woo! Keep smiling. So now the Hoka Speedgoat 6 is available at Pro Direct Running.